Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. The last week was a Nobel Prize week. Scientists working in different fields uh, have been awarded with Nobel Prize last week. And I made a video on Nobel Prize in Chemistry. I explained what exactly it is and all the things related to that. You can watch that video in the i button if you want to. So I got some comments from uh, like aspiring researchers like why uh, there is no Nobel Prize from India or why Indian scientists are not winning Nobel Prize. And that's what motivated me to make this particular video. So if we talk about Indian scientists working in India, the last Nobel Prize which we got was back in 1930 and it was given to Dr. C. V. Raman for uh, physics. And after that, it is 94 years now almost uh, and we have no Nobel Prize as of now. So it keeps me thinking that what are the reasons behind it? And that's what this video is going to be all about. We will be talking about that. Why is it so difficult for a scientist working in India to get a Nobel Prize? What could be the reasons behind it? And also we will be talking about those scientists who have come very close to getting a Nobel Prize working in India, but they were not awarded for that. So stay with me till the end of this video. We'll be talking about a lot of things. Also, we will talk about we as a research scholars, as scientists, what we can contribute or what we can do to improve this situation and uh, the comment section is always open for you guys for your discussion for your inputs if we talk about indians who have been awarded with nobel prize so as i mentioned one of them is dr cv raman who have been awarded with nobel prize in 1930 he is the first and the only indian who has been working in india and has got a nobel prize after that we have hargobind khurana who has been awarded with nobel prize in 1968 for his work in medicine but he has worked in us next is subramanian chandrasekhar who was awarded nobel prize in physics in year 1983 again he was working in usa and then venkat ramakrishnan who was awarded for nobel prize in 2009 in chemistry and he also worked in uk and usa if you see the pattern most of these scientists although they have done their education in india but their work was recognized when they were working in abroad, when they were working in USA, UK or somewhere abroad. Now the question is why India struggles to get a Nobel Prize in science. So let's talk about the reasons which I think. The first reason which I believe is a brain drain. A lot of Indian scientists who have done their education in India, who have done their PhD or their initial works in India, but they move to abroad in search of better job opportunity, in search of better laboratory, in search of better infrastructure. And that's what is provided to them in abroad in like USA, in UK, in Europe. And uh, that's where their work get recognized because it's not about talent. They have a lot of talent and that's what they have been trained in India. But the work which they do that gets recognized when they are working in abroad. The second reason which I believe is funding and infrastructural gap. Now to do science, you need money. You need a lot of money to do a very good advanced level science. And uh, India only contributes or only invests 0.7% of their GDP to science and uh, R&D. Whereas if you compare it with other countries, they are spending like 2.8% if you compare it for USA. And if you talk about South Korea, they spend 4.9% of their GDP to research science and development now lack of advanced lab lack of instrumentation lack of long-term grant that's what basically restricts indian scientists from getting something or doing something for a long time the way how funding works in india is it depends a lot on government a lot of government funding is required to do science and very less uh, private research funding or private research investment is there which of course is changing with time we will be talking about that at another section of this video. But as of now, it, the private research funding, which you will see in USA and other countries, they have a different setup for funding, like the government also funds, but there is also a private research investment. And that's what helps scientists over here. Like uh, they get a long term research grant. They can work on their field or they can dig into something for long term. That's what bring me to the third point, which is a short term research culture, which we have in India. So Indian scientists are overloaded with a lot of teaching work, a lot of administrative work. Uh, they have to write projects and they have to produce results very quickly in short cycles. 
and that's what restricts them from doing something in depth like they cannot invest themselves in long-term research uh, work they are continuously under pressure of producing results they are continuously in pressure of publishing their work and that's where it restricts them because a uh, noble work if you see any or if you will uh, read about any noble uh, research like the research which have been re awarded with the Nobel prize if you read about them it has taken decades of sustainable work decade of like dedicated work on a particular project and that's what bought them or bought those Nobel laureate to win that Nobel prize which I think we lack in this particular case next thing which I believe is a global collaboration now if you will see a pattern of Nobel prizes you will see a scientist from USA a scientist from Japan a scientist from uh, somewhere other part of the world they all three or all two have been collaboratively uh, given a Nobel Prize that's because they have been working upon similar things they even collaborate when they work or if they have been working in different timelines like for example someone who has done work a little early than the other they contribute or they collaborate with each other this kind of global collaboration culture is still lacking in India which is of course improving with time but as of now we do not have that or we do, did not had that back in time and that's where we also lack in so having a global collaboration culture also helps a lot because in that case you share your work you learn from others and in that way you can reach out to your goals much faster compared to others and that also open up with a lot of things which you are doing in case when you are doing science there are chances of course you will be making mistake you will be doing things wrong and uh, if you will collaborate with people if you will understand how other people are working you will be able to see what mistakes you have done and a lot of things are there to learn over there the next thing which i believe is bureaucratic obstacles and that i have seen during phd as well during my masters as well that if you have to buy an instrument there used to be a lot of paperwork it used to take years sometimes to deliver an instrument okay uh, in your institute you have fund when you even have money for that in order to get an instrument in order to set up something it takes a lot of time even for approval of these things takes a lot of time in india if you compare it with the work culture in us and europe labs usually do not or the scientist or the pi they are not generally directly involved in these things they are involved in the committee to take decisions but they do not have to go through all this paperwork there are department who already are there and they take care of all the bureaucratic things so it changes a lot of like it saves a lot of time actually for the scientist and is not involved in doing paperwork and all the other steps he has to just focus on his research now these are certain factors which i think uh, directly affect how scientists work in india you can also write down in the comment section if you think there are certain more factors which you know now let's talk about those indian scientists who have been working in india which came very close to winning nobel prize but they missed it. The first thing which I can take over here is uh, Dr. Satyendranath Bose, SN Bose. He has done some very critical and fundamental work, especially in the field of quantum mechanics. His work was also taken over by Albert Einstein. He was nominated multiple times for Nobel Prize, but sadly he could not win it. The next name is Dr. Meghnath Saha. Uh, he has contributed a lot in the field of astrophysics. He formulated Saha ionization theory and again his work was groundbreaking in the field of astrophysics he was also nominated a lot many times for nobel prize the next name is dr jc bose again he has been a pioneer in the field of radio waves his recognition is said to be lacked because of colonial bias of that time the next name is dr homi bhaba he is of course known as the father of india's nuclear program he led the foundation for indian atomic research uh, his institutional contribution has been immense. He led foundation for TIFR as well. Now, what are the things that India can do and which are actually being done in the Indian scientific community, which we should acknowledge. And uh, if these things go well, we can expect a Nobel Prize in coming years. The first thing which we have to do is increase R&D funding. We have to increase the percentage of funding which we provide to science, research and development. And it requires to be increased. Of course, we have included and we have started now private research funding uh, a lot of private players have started coming up in research and which of course is going to help us in long term second thing which we have to change is we have to encourage long-term research like we have to give long-term grant programs 
uh like we cannot just rely on short term grants which we have currently also we have to work upon how institutional bureaucracy is working and give free hands to scientists to take risk to work on such projects which are risk taking and high rewarding which take which might take time but they are highly rewarding at that more international collaborations can be improved which of course we are doing a lot of new scientists a lot of labs in india are now contributing worldwide and they are producing some very good results some very good uh, like uh, publications which are which are coming from india with global collaboration which of course is a positive sign empowering more in the institutes which are made for scientific research like iits isers csir labs these are the places which were designed to work upon science a lot of funding a lot of improvement are needed in these institutes these institutes can become a new cluster for aspiring researchers for coming scientists and who knows the next nobel prize can come from some of these institutes we can also work upon how to acquire talent how to retain talent in india to avoid brain drain and provide some incentives to those scientists who are willing to come back to india work in indian institutes work in indian laboratories see india does not lack talent it lacks the support system it lacks uh, the infrastructure it lacks the ecosystem which a scientist required to work freely which he requires to do something of a nobel laureate level many scientists from dr bose to dr sudarshan came very close to winning nobel prize but they were not able to do that because of lack of institutional backing Nobel prize just not only rewards the discovery it also rewards the ecosystem behind it it also rewards the persistence of the scientist and the visibility of his or her work dr c v raman once said that the essence of science is independent thinking and hard work we have both talent and hard work what we need is an environment that lets our scientist dream big fail bravely and work freely and i believe that in coming years we will have a nobel laureate who has not just studied in india but who has worked in india lab who has produced his work over here and who has contributed to the betterment of humankind